Okay, so you will be needing, of course, your light pink yarn. That's the only yarn that you will need. You will also need your 6.5 6.5 millimeter hook. That's the only hook that you will need for this project. And you will also need, I'm trying not to, because I've been doing one of them. Actually, I can just take this out. And you will also need a stitch marker along with scissors. And I'm going to get my... For the last project, we used um, zip ties. This time, I'm using pipe cleaners. Now, I know this looks weird, but these are three pipe cleaners that I've braided together. I'm going to show you how to do this. I just took them out of the ears so that you can see. But the you'll you'll need about six pipe cleaners. I can undo that. Well, I'll undo it and then show you how to do it. But um, you'll need six pipe cleaners, three for each ear. And then you will also, depending on how high or how straight your ears look, you could stuff a little stuffing in between the ears to make it stand up a little bit straighter. But if you like how it looks, just how the um, pipe cleaners look, then you can leave that in. And you will also need, um, of course, your yarn needle. Um, and I've also changed the pattern of this uh, project. Instead of it being half double crochet and just a hat, um, you will be doing single crochet in the entire hat. So um, I will show you again how to make the hat because this time it basically is a completely different pattern. Um, so let's get started with the hat. Okay. So starting with your 6.5 millimeter hook and your pink yarn, you are going to make a magic circle. And you're going to put eight single crochet into that magic circle. That's eight. Sorry, I'm not doing it in the camera. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. Now you're going to pull that and slip stitch into your that first or top stitch. Come on. This is my issue with big hooks. There we go. It's so hard to pull, okay. Now you're going to chain one. Where's my stitch marker? Chain one. And for row one, you are going to do an increase. Come on, get that out of the way. You're going to do an increase in the next stitch. And you're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch. And then you're going to do an increase in the next stitch, and you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around for row one. Okay, so for row two, yes, for row two, you are going to do an increase in that next stitch. So you're going to do, you're going to do it. Oh, did I do that right? You're going to do an increase. In that next stitch then you're going to do one single crochet and the next two stitches come up so that's one two and then you're going to put an increase in that next stitch and then one single crochet in the next two stitches for row two and you're going to complete this pattern all the way around for row two 
All right, now, of course, at the end of row two, you are going to slip stitch this needle. I need to get tinier stitch markers. I'm going to slip stitch into that top stitch or the stitch with your stitch marker. And that is row two. Now for row three, you're going to move your stitch marker into that chain one, chain one, and put your stitch marker into that chain one. And for row three, you're going to put an increase into that next stitch. And one single crochet in the next three stitches. One, that's your one for a single crochet. Two. And three. So those are your three single crochet. Then in the next stitch you're going to do an increase and then you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around for row three. One single crochet in the next three, increase one single crochet in the next three, and so on for row three. Now, of course, after row three, you are going to slip stitch into that top stitch. And for row four, you are going to do an increase. And you're going to do an increase. And you're going to do one single crochet in the next. We'll do it. So for row four, do an increase. And of course, like I said, as you can see, um, it's a pattern that's forming. Row four, you do an increase. And then in the next four stitches, you are going to put one single crochet. One single crochet in the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. And then the next stitch, you're going to do an increase. Now I'm going to stop here. Because like I said, this you will begin to see a pattern. This is row four. We're on row four. Now what I do want to say is that well I'll I'll continue row four as I say this. Um I've said this before in a lot of my recent projects. The for this particular pattern or project that you're working in a circle or use a magic circle for, um obviously you're gonna have to increase to um you're gonna have to increase to expand your work to make it bigger and for me um depending on what whatever row that you are on one two three was that right let me see one two three four um whatever row that you are on depends on uh how many single crochets you put into your thing. I don't know if you can read my writing. Oh, this looks terrible. I'm kind of embarrassed to show this. But this is the pattern. My handwriting is, looks way better. This is just um, my pattern. And um, my pattern book. Now, what for every row, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time saying this. For every row, corresponds with the number of single crochets you should have in your pattern so we're just we're on row four you're going to do one single you're going to do an increase one single crochet in the next four increase and complete that pattern all the way around excuse me for row five um increase you're going to do an increase one single crochet in the next five increase one single crochet in the next five so basically what i'm saying is you like I said, it corresponds with the number of, if you're on row, let's say, seven, then you should have seven single crochet in that, uh, in that row. So increase one single crochet in the next seven, increase one single crochet in the next seven. If you're on row 11, you know, whatever row that you are on, to not confuse yourself, it, whatever row you are on, that's how many number of single crochet you should have. Um... Now, of course, eventually you're going to have to reach the end. And a lot of the times with stuff like this, you may not get the rest of your single crochet into the back of it. That's fine. 
just make sure that at least when you're starting it, starting the row, like when I just started row four, I was obviously able to have one single crochet in the next four. But reaching the end, you may not be able to fit all your single crochet, and that's fine because you start to expand and you may not have that much room. That's totally fine. But whatever row that you are on, you need to have the same amount of single crochet. So with that being said, again, if you have a um, question about that, feel free to comment. The only reason I'm saying this is because the this is a hat, so you are crocheting it that fits your head type. Now, I'm not that skilled to know how much you have to chain or, or crow, how many rows you have to make for a different type of head size, because I feel like I have a pretty big head. And um, for me, like I said, the rows that you're making depends on how big you want your hat to be. Now, once you start making this hat, or once you start making it, um, of course, it's going to start to build up. Now, in any row that you are on, I did 15 rows. So that's one single crochet. Increase one single crochet in the next 15 stitches. I ended on row 15 for the crown part of the head. That crown fit the top of my head, or the crown part, the top part of my head. And then afterwards, I was able to just single crochet in all the stitches around down to my desired length of how low I wanted the hat to be. So um, I'm going to show you a little bit. This is the hat. I guess it doesn't matter. It's a preview. This is, I about ended right here. If you can see that. For this fit the crown. I'm going to expand it a little bit. This fit the crown of my head. So about here, that fit the top of my head from right here. That fit the top of my head. And so... The only reason I'm saying this and not, uh, I know I said I was going to show you everything, which I can, I can continue to show you, and I probably will, just so people can know what I'm talking about, but um, just for people who want to jump ahead and, you know, have already caught on, um, this particular um, hat, um, it all depends on the size of your head. So the rows are not going to be the same for everybody because everybody has a different type of head. So I made 15 rows of the increased single crochets. Um, and yours may not look the same because you have a different head size. But after you have made enough to fit the top, the crown of your head, um, come back and... I'll show you how to make the rest of your hat. Now, for those who still want to see um, my rows of how I made mine, I will continue to show you that. But for those, just skip ahead to the part where I'm making the ear flaps and the ears. So I'm going to finish my row four, and then I'm going to move on to... Okay, now we've done row four. I chained my one and put my... After row four, you chain one, put your stitch marker into that chain one. And for row five, we are going to do an increase into that next stitch. You're going to do an increase. And then you're going to put one single crochet in the next five stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then in that next stitch, you're going to put an increase and you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around for row five. One increase, we just finished on an increase, one single crochet in the next five, increase all the way around for row five. Now I've chained my one and inserted my stitch marker. So we've done with row, that was row five. I need to keep track of this because I keep having to remember which row I'm on. I don't want to make too many or too little. So we're on row five. We just finished row five. Now we're on row six. Now for row six, again, you're going to put an increase into that next stitch. I have to remember to um, look into the camera because like I'll be crocheting up here and you can't see because I'm looking over the camera. 
anyway and then so you did it increase now you're going to put one single crochet in the next six stitches so that's one two three four five and six and you're going to do an increase in the next stitch and then you're going to put one single crochet in the next six around until you can repeat this pattern all the way around for row six okay now for row i've chained one and slip stitch chained one put my single split put my maybe i should keep maybe i should show that too anyway um for now we're on row seven now you're going to go into that next stitch do an increase next stitch do an increase and then you're going to put one single crochet in the next seven stitches so that's one two three four five six and seven then you're going to do an increase into that next stitch and then you're going to put one single crochet in the next seven and increase after that and you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around for row seven all right after row this is we're ending on row six sorry i wasn't showing this just to make make it clear i'm going to slip stitch into that top stitch Chain one, move your stitch marker. No, that was row seven, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, not to confuse you, that was row seven. Uh, chain one, you just finished row seven. Now, let me write this down. Yep, that was row seven, okay. I had to remind myself. Anyway, now moving on to row eight. I'm not gonna have to spread it out like that. But now when we, ugh, now moving on to row eight, you are going to do an increase in that next stitch. Ooh, come on, increase into that next stitch. And then one single crochet in the next eight stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, Seven and eight. Now you're gonna put one, gonna put an increase into that next stitch, and you're gonna repeat this pattern all the way around for row eight. Now coming to the end of row eight, you're going to slip stitch into that top stitch. I keep stitch, st slip stitching and chaining one without showing you guys. Um, this is form of habit. But now we're done with row eight. Now we're moving on to row nine. And we're gonna do an increase in that next stitch. Increase into that next stitch. And then one single crochet in the next nine stitches. I'm trying to hurry up and do this because I'm running out of memory on my camera. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine, sorry, nine. Now you're gonna go in and you're gonna do an increase into that next stitch, and then one single crochet in the next nine stitches. And of course, it's gonna start to form into however big or whoever you're making this for the crown like i said before um i'm gonna stop here and i'm going to crochet the amount of rounds that i did so that you can see how it looked or how it should look for because if you if you crocheted to what i did then you have the same size head as me and um 
just to show you what that looks like. Um, it could be less, it could be more, depending on the size of your head. And then I will move on and show you how to continue the rest of the hat. Okay, now this is my row 15. I've gone to my row 15. Now this reaches just, remember I said, make it to where you have, it reaches about the crown of your head. But remember after this, uh, after whatever row you finished your increases on, you are just going to single crochet in every row, every stitch around for as many rows as you need until it reaches um, the point that you want on your head. So if you want it just, you know, above your eyebrows or below, uh, below your eyebrows, single crochet it until it reaches that point of however you want it to be. For me, excuse me, for me, I did about, if I can find the pattern, come on. I did, so this is row 15, I did um, for rows 16 through 29, I did one single crochet in every stitch around, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I did 14 more rows, or after my increases, I did 14 rows of single crochet to reach my desired length of my hat. Now you can either do a longer or shorter, it just depends on how you want your hat to look. Now this is what it looks like for, this is my last row, 15, 15 single crochet increase. And after that you will get this. Now this is my hat, and I've already added one ear flap, just so, um, maybe I should put this higher so you can see. Let me see. Okay, this is my hat. Now, I have the ear flap here. I've added already added in one so you can see what it looks like. This is, again, everything is made from single crochet. And I'm going to show you how to make the other ear flap. And we will end on the, um, oh, you see my game. <laughs> I have it. I have it. You're propped up on a few of my games. Anyway. And my books. So I'm going to show you how to make the ear flap now. And then we're going to move on to uh, the ears lastly. Now, um, what I like to do with this particular part is you can use stitch markers if you want. I can use one of these. because I can unravel this now because I've already done it. Now, um put all these tails behind so you can see now this is the the ear that's the ear now um what I like to do is why is this not flattening properly what I like to do is you just look at where you want eyeball it and look at where you want your ears to go now I did mine right here and you want to make sure that it matches with the other side of where you want it to go. So I did mine here, so I'm just going to eyeball it over here. And I'd say maybe about right here. Can you see that? Maybe right there or right, maybe right here. And I like that amount of space, this amount of space for my ear muff. Now, ear flap. Now, I did the same thing on the other side. Let me see if this is the same. Yeah, about the same. Uh, yeah, and do that. Fold your hat in half and make sure you put and see if it both sides equal up. To that and mine yeah just about does so do that but you're gonna have to do this for both sides so decide how big you want the ear flaps put in a stitch marker put in a stitch marker to see where you want it to go and then after that we are going to start on the ear so since I've already done this side I'm going to move over to this side now what you want to do is you want to take your 
Wait, I have to unravel my, um, my practice. Okay, I have my thing unraveled. Now, what you want to do is make a slip, a slip knot. Add your hook, and you're going to go in, since the flaps are going to be formed out here, you're going to go into one of these uh, stitches. It doesn't matter which one. Excuse me. So I'm going to go, let me remember where it is. I'm going to go into this one at the top, the top one. So just make sure that you keep that stitch marker on the last stitch. But you're going to add the slip knot to your, um, to your needle and you're going to go into that stitch pull this closer go into that stitch that you've already done and you're going to slip stitch into that stitch Oop. slip stitch into that stitch and then you're going to chain one let me look at my work to make sure i'm doing this properly yeah. So after that, you're going to go into this same stitch that you slip stitched and single crocheted, and you're going to put in, you should turn this so you can, because you're working it into that point. So I'm going to try to, there's so much going on here. Okay. So our stitch marker is right here. So you're going to go into the same stitch that you've done your slip stitch and your single crochet, I mean chain one, and you're going to single crochet into that stitch and single crochet across until you reach your stitch marker. Now this is the first row of the ear flap. So for row one, you slip stitch into the stitch that you want to go into for your ear flap, chain one, then you're going to single crochet into that same stitch and you're going to single crochet across the entire area until you get to your um, ball's about to fall off my table until you get to oh you don't even see that sorry until you get to your stitch marker now we reached our stitch marker so you're going to single crochet into that stitch, then you're going to chain one and for and turn your work. And for row two, for row two through seven, wait, where's my lips in my pattern? Two through eight, I'm sorry. Two through eight, you are going to chain one and single crochet across. Now we're on row two. Oh, also I want to say this too. The chain, uh, the one that you chained one in, go back into the same stitch for this part so that it can line up a lot better. So on row two, but for rows one through eight, you are going to chain one and single crochet across and of course when you reach the side you'll know that you've reached this end it doesn't have the stitch marker but it has this uh the tail on it so you know that you've reached the end and you're going to do this for rows one through seven and then i will come back and show you how to complete the rest of the ear flap and then it will just be on to the ears and we will be done. Oh, come on. Last stitch. Chain one, turn. Okay, I finished my rows. One through eight of single crochet. Wait, I have to fix this. Hold on. And I'll just fold this in half, that makes it easier. Now for row 9 and 10, you are going to chain 1 
and you are going to do a decrease in the beginning and end of the rows and single crochet in between for row 9 and 10. Now usually for a decrease I would go into this stitch because a decrease is meant to pull it together but you're still going to go into this the, the stitch that you chained one and you're going to do the decrease in that just to still try to make it line up um, make it line up a little bit better so I did my two decreases now you're going to do one single cro you're going to do a single crochet until you get to the last four stitches since a decrease takes up um, two stitches um, so we're almost to the end let me see one, two, three, four. Okay, one more. And then we're going to do our, let me roll this out a little bit more. You're going to do a decrease in the end. It's one, a decrease. Now this is row nine. After that, you are going to chain one, turn your work. This is going to be a Come on. Oh, I almost, my yarn almost rolled off the thing. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure you guys see what I'm talking about. Okay, there we go. So for row 10, for row 10, you're going to do another decrease in the beginning. Sorry about that. Um, you're going to do a decrease and the beginning and end, so this is one decrease, make sure you go into that same stitch again, and then another increase, and then you're going to single crochet in between, remember leaving two, four stitches, four stitches, Wait, let me see. Okay, I'm down to my last four stitches, and you're going to do a decrease. And the last, where's that stitch? The last two stitches. And that is for row 9 and 10. Yeah, you can see it's starting to, to sort of lean out a little bit more. Now for row 11, you are going to chain 1, and I already chained my 1, and... Turn your work again. Turn your work again. And you are going to put one single crochet in every stitch around for row 11. So single crochet well one single crochet across until you reach the end for row 11 okay so we're done with row 11 now we're gonna move on you chain one and turn your work and for rows 12 and 13 come on for rows 12 and 13, sorry, I'm trying to adjust it to where you can see it. For rows 12 and 13, you're going to decrease in every stitch across. So this is row 12. Remember, you're still going into that same stitch that you had. So decrease. Decrease. That's row 12, you're going to chain 1, turn your work again, and this is the last row. Uh, usually, you single crochet in the last stitch, because there's not going to be enough stitches left to do another decrease. 
So you can only have you only have two decreases in this row, so that's one, two, and then single crochet into that last stitch. Then chain one. Leave a tiny tail so you can sew that on. And that is your flaps. I'm gonna lay it out to show you what it looks like, and then we'll move on to and also just to make sure that you've made them the same size, you want to line them up on both sides to make sure that you made them the same size. So I'm going to push this out so you can see, let me get all these strings out of the way for you. And this is what the hat part is gonna look like. Now we're gonna move on to the ear flaps. Um, we're gonna move on to the ear flap, not ear flaps, we just did the ear flaps. Move on to the ears, which was the most confusing part that people had and then we will be done with the project. Now for this project, I have used, um, where's my other one? I used pipe cleaners instead of, um, I used pipe cleaners instead of uh, zip ties. The zip ties are the only thing I had on hand, but um, now I have pipe cleaners. Now I did do three, Excuse me, I did, you need three for the project. Six in all, three for um, each ear. But um, I don't have enough left to complete the other ear, so I'm going to use two because I have none left. But for the original project, you do need three for each ear. So that, that matches too. I'm gonna use two for green and orange for the other one. Now, uh, I will show you the first how to do the pipe cleaners for the original project and then I'll show you how to do it for mine. So if you guys know how to braid, uh, and if you don't, it's fine too. Uh, basically you're gonna take three of your, um, the three pipe cleaners that you have and you're gonna braid them together, three strand braid. Um, and what I like to do is just sort of hook these around each other Okay, so what I want to do first, sorry about that, is um, I want you to twist your the tops of your uh, things together. It doesn't really matter. I'll unravel them so you can see how I... You just twist them together at the top like that to make sure that they're, they stay together. And... I don't usually, I don't teach, I don't know how to do braids, but basically you would three, you strand, you braid this, these together, and then you fold them in half. So I'm going to show you how I did it, but if you don't want to do that, just like how you twisted these, just twist them together like this. It, you really don't have to braid them if you don't want to, but, um... I'm going to braid mine together just to show you how I did mine. Well, I'll start a little bit of the braid, but you braid yours together or twist them. Come on. Or twist them. I know this looks a mess, but it's going to be going in your hat. Nobody's going to see it. Now, I've braided it a little bit. You can either braid yours or twist them. I would actually do the, the twist. This is a, just a little bit more complicated. I mean, but once you have the full braid, I don't want to braid it all because I still need two for each one because I don't have enough. You're going to fold it. Once the braid is done, you're going to fold it in half and then stick it in your ear. But you will also need a little bit of pillow stuffing. So I'm going to come back to this because I want to make the ear first and then uh show you how it's okay so for the ears um i don't know why i said ear like that for the ear portion it's made with a different pattern but somewhat the same way so i'm gonna take oh excuse me i'm gonna take my 6.5 millimeter hook and let me put this here so I can see it and we'll have to keep taking it out. Okay, now for 
the ear flaps, you're going to make a slip knot and you're going to chain 11. Now this is what we did in the original pattern, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. But we did half double crochets, and in this one, like I said, you single crochet. Oh, sorry, I'm doing steps before explaining them. Okay, so once you've chained 11, you're going to make sure your chain is straight, and you're going to slip stitch into that first stitch that you made. Now, you're going to chain one, and you're going to add your stitch marker in, and you're going to single crochet in every stitch around. So that is your next stitch there. Single crochet in every stitch around for, this is the starting row. I don't uh, usually count the starting row uh, and I didn't count it with this one either, just with this particular project, but with something like this, uh, this is just the starting row. This is not row one. So single crochet around for the starting row, and I will be back to show you what to do for the next part. Okay, now we're done with the starting row. You're gonna slip stitch into that stitch that has a stitch marker. Come on. And now you are going to chain one, and for rows one through three, you are going to, wait, let me make sure I read this right. One, two, three, four, five, hold on, this isn't making any sense. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I didn't write down the pattern in my book because I was following along with the pattern that I did so that I did for the original project. So, like I said, that's correct. Rows one through three, I'm following the pattern. Uh, the pattern still is mostly the same for the bunny ears except a single crochet, but I'm still gonna show you. So for rows one through three, you are gonna chain one and single crochet in every stitch around. I was right about that. Um, I just have to remember to write this down in the description because I didn't write it down in the thing. I was so confused because I went from row 1 through 3 and then it just was at 26 next, row 26. And I'm like, what does this mean? This makes no sense. But, yes, yeah, so you're going to chain 1, insert your stitch marker, and for rows 1 through 3, you are going to chain 1 and single crochet all the way around for rows 1 through 3. Okay, now moving on to row four, you're going to chain one and slip stitch chain one. And then for row four, you are going to put two increases in the beginning and end of the row. So you're going to go into that next stitch and do an increase. That's one and two. And you're going to go into the next stitch and do another increase. And then you're going to single crochet in between. Um, now single crochet until you reach the last two stitches and then put your increases, remember two e increases in the beginning and end. So in our last two stitches, so we're going to do an increase in this stitch and an increase in that last stitch. And then you're going to slip stitch into that top stitch. This is row four. We're ending on row four. Moving on to row five. You're going to chain one. And for rows five through 13, you are going to chain one and single crochet in every stitch around for rows five through 13. All right, I have finished my rows. I finished my row 13. Now you are going to chain one and you are going in row, for row 14, you are going to put an increase, two increases in the beginning and end of the row for row 14. So 
go into the next stitch that's an increase go into that next stitch and also do another increase and you're going to single crochet in between make sure that you leave two stitches at the very end so you can put your increases and that is your pattern for row 14. I've gotten to the end of my row 14 you're going to slip stitch into that top stitch and that is row 14. Now for rows 15 through 17 you are just going to chain one and single crochet in every stitch around for rows 15 through 17. All right, scratch that, scratch that, scratch that. Um, not, I'm sorry about that. Not an increase. I read it wrong. It's a decrease. Sorry, I have my thing really sitting far away. I'm sorry about that. It's not a increase. For row 14 is a decrease. I'm so sorry. Um, so I unraveled mine. Uh, for row 14, it's two decreases in the beginning and end of the row, not an increase. I'm sorry. So remember, the decrease is um, four. I mean, a decrease takes up two stitches. So when you get to the end of your row 14, make sure you leave four stitches. Um, so that you can decrease. So I'm coming to the end of mine. I'm sorry about that. I was wondering, I was holding it up to my other ear and wondering why it wasn't shrinking and it was because I was increasing instead of decreasing. I just read it wrong. Um, but, so see, we got one, two, three, four. Okay, now this is the last four stitches. I'm gonna do a decrease. Then you're gonna do another decrease. And then slip stitch into that top stitch I moved my stitch marker because I had to unravel it but slip stitch and now for rows 15 through 17 you are going to chain one and single crochet um, around for rows 15 through 17 okay now I have finished my rows now for row 18 you are going to chain one of course and you're going to decrease in the beginning and end of the row just one decrease so you're going to single crochet in between that and wait let me say this for rows 18 and 19 you're going to single cro a decrease in the beginning and end and single crochet in between. So I'm just going to show this on camera because I'm already almost done with it. Got one more row before we decrease. Decrease. This is row 18. We are going to slip stitch into that stitch and for row excuse me for row 19 you're going to do the same thing of chaining one putting your stitch marker into that stitch and for row 19 you're going to decrease in the beginning and end of the row so Again, going into that stitch, pulling up a loop, going into the next stitch, pulling up a loop, that's a decrease. Then single crochet in between. Make sure you leave two stitches available. Oh, I didn't even know the yarn was in the thing. Anyway, um, keep single crocheting. Should I bend this so that... Yeah, that makes it a lot easier and that's wait I only have one stitch so I'm gonna do a decrease in the end stitch and then you're gonna slip stitch into that last stitch and then chain one 
Now for row 20, you are just going to chain one and single crochet in every stitch. Okay, now for row 21, you are going to chain one and you're going to decrease in the beginning and end of the row for row 21. I'm going to do this on camera just because it's ear, since we're starting to reach the beginning or the end of the ear, um, oh wait, oh, there's two stitches left, okay, it goes a lot quicker. So decrease in that last stitch for row 21, you're going to slip stitch into that stitch with the stitch marker. Why is this okay? Now for row 22, you are going to chain one and you're going to single crochet. Let me make sure this lines up with, yeah, chain one and you're going to single crochet in every stitch around for row 21. You're not sorry, I'm not showing what I was doing. So, single crochet in every stitch around for row 21. Ooh, I dropped my yarn for row 21. And heading to that last stitch, single crochet, slip stitch into that. Stitch with the stitch marker and chain one. Now I'm going to line this up to mine. So on this last row, for row, we just did row what? 22, I think. So for row 23, add your yarn. And for row 23, you are going to put a decrease in the beginning and end of the row and single crochet in between for row 23. So it's going to get tighter. I'm trying my hardest to show the stitches. And this is the last two stitches. So, go in, last two stitches, and single slip stitch into that last. Oh, come on. See, it starts to get tighter, so it's harder to slip stitch, especially with this needle. Come on, slip stitch, and then you are going to chain one. Now you're going to yarn off, and this is still opened for us. This is still opened. So all you're going to do is make sure it's pointed. This is my other ear. Make sure it's pointed at the top, and take your yarn needle. Wait, let me get my yarn needle. So you're going to take your yarn needle and this, it's still a little bit open at the top. So what you want to do is just sew lightly, go into the stitch, pull that tight, go into the stitch and just single crochet, not single crochet, sew across, go back on the other side, go back on the other side and so just sew the top closed lightly and then push it out some to make it form you know the pointy part and that is your ear now i'm going to show you again like i've showed you in the beginning i'm going to show you again what you need to do for the pipe cleaners and then okay now i'm going to take i'm going to undo my braided part 
for my thing, but like I said, you can either braid it or twist it. Uh, because I'm, you will need three, like I said, for each ear, but I don't have enough, so I'm only going to use two. But, um, I'm just going to twist mine, or, yeah, twist mine, because I only have two, but you can either braid or twist. And I'll show you what I mean by twist. Um, once I get these unraveled, sorry. Okay, now the beginning of this... Still starts the same. I'm gonna use my two orange ones and you just twist them around. And you wanna make sure, because pipe cleaners have that pointy part, make sure that that's wrapped around. You don't want that digging into your head. And I'm just going to twist it like that. Just twist, 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 twist. Twist them together. And like I said, you can do that for the three pipe cleaners instead of trying to braid it if that's a little easier for you. It doesn't really matter because... So this obviously isn't... This is too taller than the ear, so you're going to bend it in half. Twist that a little bit more. It's coming undone. Twist it in half and make sure that the bottom parts of these are sort of pushed inwards. You don't, like I said, you don't want that pointing into your head. Now, I'm gonna, you're gonna bend them like this and you're gonna push them into your ear. Push them however far you want in. Now, this is standing pretty straight up. So, if you want. One of Louise's ears sort of flop over. So I'm going to sew in one of these to see how, because see it's already starting to flop a little bit. I'm going to see how it looks on the hat. And again, for that, it's easy. You just pick around the crown of this, this little part right here. Put both ears on each side like so but hopefully this stands up I might also well I'm gonna do that too let me get my stuffing pillow stuffing is optional but I'm going to lightly stuff so I'm gonna take a little bit of stuffing I'm gonna take this out and I'm going to lightly stuff it at the top I have a little I don't know where that thing went but it's a little um Sort of flatten it out a little bit and lightly stuff it at the front before you put your uh, pipe cleaners in. Make sure you flatten it too. Just take tiny pieces of your stuffing and flatten it and push it at the top. Now add in your pipe cleaners. Make sure again, like I said, they're folded. And make sure that's distributed equally. And I'm going to see how well this sticks. See that? It's now sitting pretty straight up because I added in the stuffing. So add in stuffing at the very beginning. Make sure, like I said, you sew in the, the very top of it because it'll come out the top. And um, add a little bit of stuffing. Make sure it's not a lot. Don't actually stuff it uh, heavily because you want it to still be flat and then add in your pipe cleaners and then sew yours onto your hat. And I'm going to sew one end to show you what it looks like and then I'm going to sew the other end and then I will be back with your the final product. Okay, something I do want to say before I sew mine in is this is the top of the hat. You don't want to just sew it because the hat is flat, but you want it to don't want to just sew it like that because when you put on the hat it's going to expand so you want to go underneath your hat and sort of fluff it out and then sew it on so that when you sew it on if you sew it on flat like that the chances are the ear will flop down so make sure you puff it out puff it out like this 
and then sew it on like that, if that makes sense. So I'm going to sew mine on. Let me get, I have a tiny little thing, but I think this is all I need, honestly. So wait, let me flatten it and make sure that this is where I want it to go. I want it to go there. So I'm going to push this out and start sewing on my ear. I want to make sure this is where I want it to go. All right. So I'm going to push this out a little bit now. Let me tilt this down so you can see. I've pushed this out to make sure that it's where I want it to go. I'm going to put it right there. So I'm going to start sewing in my ear. Go underneath this. Go underneath this. Go over top of this. Make sure this go go back in and come out the top over here. If it will let me. There we go. And go back to the bottom of this. Go through the bottom this part. Pull through. Make sure this pipe cleaner isn't showing. And go over top of this back out oh my thing is about to okay it's not actually being sewn how I want it to be I'm gonna pull this out and restart I'm sorry it's not that's I don't like the way it's being sewn on because if I sew it on like that it's gonna flop over like it was doing so wait, I'm going to add more to my yarn. I'm going to add more uh, length to my yarn. And then I'll be back again to show you. I didn't like the way that looked. Okay, I've sewn on one ear to see what it looks, to show you what it looks like. Um, and I'm actually pretty excited uh, from how it has turned out. Because the first one, the first method of me uh, doing that was not working out well. So I'm gonna try to show you to the best of my ability. I'm trying to get all these strings and stuff out of the way. So you can, so I can try to show you this the best way. Okay, so, I'm sorry, I have to get my, to reattach this yarn. I'm going to put this under the project so that it's not a lot of ends. So I'm going to attach more. I didn't sew up. Oh, I, I did. Okay. Um, I'm going to sew this, this end afterwards, but I'm going to start sewing in. I don't have an end to this. Excuse me. So I have to add yarn anyway, but I'm going to start to lightly stuff the top part of my ear again. And so far, it looks like it's standing up. Uh, it looks like it's standing up pretty nicely. I'll make sure. So you can see the stuffing. You can see the stuffing here. Uh, lightly stuff the front part. And the rest of it will go here. So I haven't done my... Let me move this out the way first. Well, I'm going to add add in your other ear. Um, I'm going to twist this. And make sure I bend that around so that won't start sticking you. And I'm just going to twist this again. Twist, 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 twist. I'm at the end. I'm going to bend that inward so that it won't hurt my ear. And I'm going to fold it in half like this. And I'm going to insert that into the, 
everything. I need to stuff this a little bit. I think so. I'm going to lightly stuff this a little bit more over top of this. Lightly push it in over top of the pipe cleaners and down into this, but still make sure that it looks pretty much flat. Now also you can kind of see the green a little bit in there um, to make it all look together. I don't really know too much about pipe cleaners. Maybe they have pink ones, but uh, use a lighter colored one or pink, but it still really doesn't matter. So I'm going to start to add in my yarn for my yarn needle and add my yarn to my yarn needle. I get a long tail here. Now I'm going to go, since I you should have a, a end to this but I didn't so I'm just going to add this in and make sure I leave a tail for this to sew in now again like I said you're going to want to pull out okay that looks there about there Like it there, or right there. I think I like it right there. Okay, so oh, I already pulled it out. Dang it. So what you want to do is, like I said, pull, pull the hat. I'm gonna try to turn it sideways so y'all can see what I'm talking about. I'm trying to get all these. Now I want mine about right here, about right there. So. What you're going to do is make sure, I'm going to make sure this is where I want it. Okay, you're going to make sure, push your hat out with your hand and make sure that you sew it on like that. So I'm going to go through a, one of the bottom stitches of this and I'm going to go through the hat and come out on the other side of the hat like that and I'm going to pull that through and then I'm going to go through the hat can you see that go through the hat and through another bottom stitch of the ear I want to make sure I go through more stitches in that and pull that through and again continue that so I'm going to go into this Another stitch, go out through the hat here, pull up, pull through, starting to form, and I'm going to go around, go back through, back through the hat here, back through the hat and go up underneath the ear again and pull through make sure I don't get that and pull through and I run the opposite side and you're going to do the same thing so I'm going to go through a tiny stitch in the top of the head right here, go through the bottom part of the ear, and so, oh, I almost, it's getting caught on everything because I have a long, oh, see, getting caught on the ears, and again, make sure I'm going to puff this out to make sure it's sitting nicely going to go through the bottom of this, go through the bottom of, out into the bottom of the hat, go 
go back up through the hat and through the bottom of the ear. And then go back through the bottom and continue. Oop, I got the scissors caught up. What is that? What is this? Okay, that's the end. Okay. And then slowly make your way over to this side, which is pretty much everything is already. pretty taut to the ear and then you can I'm gonna go over this one more time just to make sure it's secure and that is how you add on your ears and I'm gonna come back with the final product and we are done I'm gonna sew on my ends and stuff and then come back okay now this is the final product for the Louise bunny hat and I might add in, the ears do stand up pretty well with the pipe cleaners, but I might add in a tiny video of me putting it on. And Hello. <laughs> okay, so this is the final product. They do stand up uh, pretty well, I think. But this is the final product. You can also tilt one down if you want. That's sort of how Louise's is. One is tilted down and one is tilted up. But this is the final product for my channel, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you soon.